Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and welcome to today's bonus upload. Before we jump into this bonus, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's bonus, shall we? Today's video is absolutely one of the most amazing experiences I've ever heard. Uh, I was supposed to do an interview with the woman that this occurred happened to, uh, but we ran out of time and uh, she wanted to share the encounter with me prior to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share it with you guys and she's going to come back on and fill in the gaps that I missed. But when I say it is one of the most amazing uh, encounters I've ever heard, you will see why. And uh, let's get into it. So the encounter starts off five years prior to the the main encounter, which was, I believe, in 2021 or 2022. Um, like I said, there's going to be gaps that she'll have to fill in. Um, so five years prior to the main recent encounter, she was out hiking in um, the Black Hills. And in South Dakota. Now, she had come across a, she was hiking and she could hear this kind of uh, crying or, or whining. And, and it, it sounded like a dog whining, a very loud cry. Now, trapping, I guess, is illegal out there. And she comes across what she thought was a wolf, uh, about 90 pounds, in a trap, uh, a leg trap. So she's pregnant at the time and trying to figure out how she's going to get this wolf free. Because it's first in pain, there's it's bleeding. Um, and any wild animal, if they're hurt, even if you're trying to help them, is going to lash out because it's all they know. You know, they feel pain and they're they're afraid. That doesn't happen. She talks to the to the dog or wolf, excuse me, and. It kind of turns its head. She quickly opens it and releases the wolf from this trap. Um, the wolf kind of looks at her and walks away. She takes the trap with her, puts it in her bag, and lives her life uh, for five years. So 
five years goes by and she's out hiking in the vicinity of where she had released this trap wolf. She's got her son with her. And he's a, he's a young guy, four or five, not very big, you know, easy to, easy to carry, easy to pick up. So they're hiking and having a great day, you know, laughing, giggling. <clears throat> and as they're walking into this like kind of cavern, not a cave, but like, uh, where the cliffs, you know, you're, it's an open cavern. You're kind of walking into cliffs on both sides. Um, and she sees this head. Now, how she described it was, it was a smaller muzzle with smaller ears than your atypical dog man. She could see tufts of hair on it. And it was not your typical underworld dog man. Uh, it, it, the way she described it was a very similar to what I saw in 1994. Uh, a leathery kind of looking skin. Um, it did have hair kind of like, uh, <laughs> the best way she described the face and head and the skin kind of like a, uh, like a, like a scrotum, <laughs> scrotum sack. Um, the boy sees her son sees it and he's like, I want to go. That's a mean dog. Now, as she's backing out, and like I said, she's going to come on and she's going to fill in the gaps that I cannot for you guys. I'm, I'm going off of this encounter from a phone call we had last night. So she's got her son in her, in her hands. She's got her backpack. Her firearm, her sidearm is in there. It's a 45. She eventually has it out and she's got her son. As she's leaving this area, um, she sees two more dogmen. These look like the underworld dogman. These guys are very large, muscular. Uh, one's like seven feet tall. The other's about six, six foot, maybe six and a half foot. And smaller, much smaller. Now, she's afraid. She, in her head, she's seeing... The first one that looks absolutely evil. And now she sees these two. And going based off of her fear and adrenaline, fight or flight. These things are, in her eyes, evil as well. And um, she starts to run or walk briskly. Let's say briskly. Her son is like, let's get out of here. And she's like, I'm trying. But he also sees these two and says they look like his uncle's German shepherds a little bit. Now, as she's walking, these two are behind her. And she's just blown away at the, the way they look. This and that. Nothing she has ever seen before. Um, but very muscular. And she hears kind of like a clash. Uh, like when two animals just connect with each other and start fighting. And she can hear kind of like these 
dog fighting noises off in the distance from the way she had just come. Now she's even more afraid because now she can hear an attack happening. So she's trying to get out of there. I believe the bigger one kind of takes off, goes back towards where the noise is. But the smaller of the one, the two is behind her. And as she's running, it's running behind her, almost like a chaperone. Uh, and, and it was interesting how she said this, that she felt like this one was trying to protect her. Because as we know, dogman, werewolf, um... <laughs> she's just petrified. The one that's behind her pushes, not pushes, but she can feel the palm of this creature's hand touch her back. So like the back of her neck, maybe where like your hairline would be on the back of your natural hairline from you know the top part of your neck to like the mid back is as large as this creature's hand was a push. She keeps running <clears throat> at some point she falls. All right. And the one, the smaller of the two, kind of grabs her arm to get her to, to pick her back up and it it cuts her arm with his claw so as this one's picking her up it realizes that it had cut her and she's bleeding and the other one is now there and kind of licks her arm now, back up for a minute. Like I said, she's coming on and she's going to fill in the blanks. I just want to share this with you guys because it's true. I was blown away. She feels like this smaller one is, is with her during this kind of battle that's going on behind her. The other one kind of goes off. But since this has happened, she's been listening to Encounters. And she feels like this one was with her because of how they hunt. Kind of like a raptor. Two, three at a time. Foo, foo, come out. So that's why she thinks this one's kind of accompanying her. And it's running bipedally. Backing up one more time to the wolf when she releases the wolf. This wolf had the most yellowish, orangish eyes. She remembers that. In it, that it was nine, it was bigger than any kind of wolf that she has seen. Um, so she eventually gets to her car. Her son's terrified. This, this, and that. She realizes that she doesn't have her keys. She doesn't have her phone. She dropped her bag during the during the run. She remembers that she's got a key hidden on her vehicle, magnetic little lockbox thing under her wheel well or whatever. Gets in her car and leaves. Now her son is oh wait. As she's running, sorry guys, as she's running and she stops. She hears a, a, a kind of crunch, a, a crunch noise. Her son had an apple and had given it to this, this dog man. And as she had heard this crunch, she turned around and she said that the, the dog man had the apple in its mouth and kind of like the peanut butter when, when a dog gets into peanut butter. It kind of does that thing with its mouth. And, and that's what ha happened. 
it was stuck in its teeth. Now, another thing is another thing that's interesting about this is the two dog men that look like the underworld dog men had very large dog man teeth that we hear about all the time. Okay. The one, the abnormal looking one, the, the, the skinnier one, the leathery kind of hairy, leathery looking evil creature, um, had these kind of pointed sharp teeth, like a crocodile or like a lemon shark. Um, I believe it was a lemon shark that she said. And I wish it hadn't gotten so late so she could have shared this. But like I said, guys, and you, I, I, I cannot wait until she comes so you guys can hear it from her. So it's eating this apple and it's stuck in its mouth. And she proceeds to run. It kind of pushes her along again. It kind of nudges her. So she gets to her car, realizes the phone's gone, her keys are gone. It's it's a mess. And uh, she gets the key from the wheel well, unlocks the door, gets in the car, and her son's like, you know, mommy, it was evil. I don't like those dogs, this, this, and that. So... They, God, I don't know how to, the little boy is now mom and boy, mom and son are convinced that <clears throat> all of these creatures were evil. Uh, but she starts thinking about this as time goes by, you know. She's like, wait a second, like, this one helped me up. This one licked my arm. Um, the littler one, that one that helped her up, had cut her arm by accident. And, and you could tell that, you know, he was running, trying to protect her. It ate the apple. And uh, they leave. They get home and, uh, you know, she's got a cut on her arm, whatever, this, this, and that. Her son was big into Sonic the Hedgehog and had dropped uh, one of his kind of Sonic the Hedgehog keychains or whatever. Um... I'm just, I keep, I, this is so amazing. So I think about a couple weeks goes by and, uh, she goes back by herself. Okay. So like I said, there are gaps in this that I'm, I heard the story once we talked about it. Um, it was either a week or a couple days that she goes back. During this whole time, she's thinking about how these other ones are different, <clears throat> this and that, than the the evil looking one that is clearly different than the ones that saved her. Now, when we were talking and I said, hey, there was kind of a clash that you said you heard. Was it the bigger one? And she thinks that there was a third one that was with those other two that clashed with the eviler one or the whatever you want to call it the 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 more different of the the other ones no tail shorter muzzle kind of like a werewolf but very different it, it's very strange it sounds like exactly what i saw once again it, it's it's crazy <clears throat> So she goes back and she's looking for her bag, her phone, uh, her keys, and her, and her son's toy. And out comes, 
I believe the two, the smaller one and the other one, the other male. They're all clearly males. As you can see testicles. Um, she notices that this toy <laughs> is in the fur of this other one, the, the small juvenile looking one, the smallest of them, which you'll see why in a second. I said juvenile. All, all of a sudden, this female comes out, clearly a female. Um, same build as the others, but breasts and a mane, a beautiful mane on it. And, and she sees this female and she gets uh, nervous. You know, she's like, oh my God, the, the female is not acting like the other males were towards her. Almost like, who the hell are you? Get out of here. Kind of whatever. The smallest dog man walks up to her and looks at her and kind of rubs its ankle, its leg, and points to her belly and rubs her ankle and points to her belly. And she's kind of taken back, you know, uh, the, the whole almost PTSD, you know, of the situation that happened has, you know, got her mind going a million miles an hour, fear, adrenaline. She's trying to think what, what is this? Like, yes. Are you looking for my son? What my son, you know, she's thinking all of these things and it keeps rubbing its ankle and lifting its fur on its ankle. And she ends up leaving. Now, she has not shared this experience with too many other people, but she shared it with one other person who put the pieces of put the puzzle piece together for her and said, You didn't notice the one that you saved five years ago that it had strange looking legs that you rescued that one when you were pregnant the smaller juvenile was the dog or wolf that she thought was a wolf that she released from that trap and it remembered her belly, ankle, belly, ankle. She believes that this area is their, their stomping ground, their hunting ground. It's a very, uh, she hikes that area because there's not a lot of people that go there. It's a very secluded area. Um, she's very active. She's a very athletic woman. And... She, after her friend and her figured out that this was the one that saved her or that she saved, then kind of looked out for her and her son. <clears throat> now, we talked for a good two hours and, you know, I, I, it's about two in the morning right now. I'm piecing this together. I truly understand why she didn't want to share tonight and record tonight because, you know, it's getting late and it's, it's a stressful thing. You know, she's, <laughs> I, she reached out to me two months ago to share this with me and I didn't know what this experience was. We've been she's been having a hard time even talking about it, but she, she, re, you know, reached out and said, Hey, I've got an encounter. I want to talk to you. We tried to set up some time. You know, she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to share this encounter when her son's around because she doesn't want to have, um, the trauma, 
the mental trauma that, you know, she doesn't want him to relive it. But he remembers that, you know, these ones were looked like her uncle or his uncle's dogs, but then there was an evil one, a mean looking one, excuse me. But how amazing is that? That five years prior, she's pregnant and saves a baby. Essentially, it's a baby dog man, 90 pounds, small, releases it. And some time later, this evil, I don't even know if it would be werewolf, dog man, whatever you want to call it, but it was not the same. It didn't resemble anything that, you know, other people talk about. I, it resembles what I had encountered. And I've only had a few other people share uh, a similarity of what I encountered. But it's truly an amazing experience because not only does it show, hey, there is an evil presence to these creatures, to the one, but then there is a kind of a, a nurturing, like you helped me. I didn't forget that. I'm going to help you. And that's what it did. And she believes that it's a juvenile because obviously it was small. It's truly an amazing, an amazing encounter. And I was blown away when I heard it. And I really, truly hope that I'm hoping that she's free tonight to record this with me. Because you guys got to hear it through her voice. Through her words, it truly is a captivating experience, but it's a learning experience because it shows that these things are not all evil, that there are some that have compassion. And ironically enough, these live in a sacred area to, to, the, to the Lakota and the Dakota Sioux, which is just so amazing. And uh, it really had me, as she was sharing this with me, it had me, my mouth was agape. And I was just blown away. And I know when she comes on that I, I couldn't even, I couldn't give this story justice. And I apologize because... It was just, <laughs> it's one that I will not forget for a while, if ever. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I honestly really do hope this woman calls back or gets in touch with me again because you know, when she told me her experience, I was blown away. We ran out of time. And unfortunately, she's kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Um, just one of those really amazing experiences that kind of sticks with you. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps the channel growing and going and honestly what gives people a chance to share their experiences and a place to share their experiences and theories judgment-free, just simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. Guys, stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.